servant. He said, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have done, had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how your heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. You see, one of the, I learned a lot of lessons about this from God. And in regards to forgiveness, this, what are some things that we can learn about forgiveness from this? First of all, we see that God commands forgiveness. He, if he's God and he's the king and he says forgive, our job is not to say, yeah, God, but. We, we say, okay, I will forgive. Another aspect that we also see here is the quality of forgiveness. I mean, we are to forgive as God forgives. Forgive completely. And it says com to forgive from the heart. That's saying complete wholeness, complete sincerity, the complete whole person of a person saying, I am fully committed to forgiving this person. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to fake it. And oftentimes we pretend and fake forgiveness, but you can't hide those things from God. And ultimately, you can't hide it from other people. You know when other people don't like you. You know when other people have something against you. You know when they resent or it'll come out again. But we also see here the issue of pride. Do you see how the servant went to that other servant and said, pay back everything you owe me. I don't care. And, and he didn't have any mercy, and he felt elite, and he had that man thrown into prison. You see, pride is that issue that really gets in the way of unforgiveness, saying, I deserve to be treated this way. You pay me back. We can't have that kind of attitude as Christians. Another aspect that we see in regards to forgiveness here is just an understanding of how we should value grace from God. I mean, if you value grace from God and you understand that you needed grace and forgiveness more than anybody in all of the world, then you understand that that other person needs grace. But as, as, as the king said also, you should have had mercy on them. My job is not to judge. That's Christ's job. My job is not to take judgment and wrath that, and justice. That's God's job. My job is to forgive, to show mercy. I should have mercy on other people because God has shown mercy to me. That shows a level of humility. That shows a level of empathy. That shows a level of compassion. I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to forgive those who have hurt you. But that's exactly what God has called us to do. But imagine the difference of what the servant could have done. Because ultimately, what's our main purpose in life? Glorify God, right? Right, Steve? We've talked about that a lot. So if our main purpose is to glorify God, our ultimate purpose is knowing that God wants to save sinners. Heaven rejoices when it happens. What would happen if he saw that other servant and the servant owed him a lot of money? He owed him, he owed him a lot of money. And the, the servant could have went and said, you know what? I forgive that debt. But let me also tell you this. I know that as a servant, we probably owe our master something. And so I know you owe the king. Let me tell you my story. Let me tell you about how I owed everything to the king and I couldn't pay him back. I could have lost my family. I could have lost my livelihood. I could have lost everything. But because of, of the king's forgiveness of my debt, I'm forgiven and I don't have to pay any of that back. And upon hearing that, the other servant could have been like, well, maybe the king would do the same thing for me. Maybe he would forgive me of my debt. Maybe he would forgive me. And, and that's something where the servant could have said, yes, let's go together and let's go to the king and let's see this grace fall upon you. And when, it, when the king, because I know his nature, because I know his character, because I know that he's willing to forgive debt, that he'll forgive you and together we'll celebrate and saying, praise the king because we have both been forgiven. Isn't that a better picture? That's more how I wish the this, this story would have ended. That's more of how I wish the servant would have been. But I think about my life and I think about my discipleship and I think about, you know what, sometimes I thwart the will of God and my effectiveness in the lives of other people because I choose not to forgive them. But ultimately, I want that fairy tale ending which says, you know what, I, I owed him everything, you owed him everything, now let's celebrate because he's forgiven us. You see, one of the amazing things is when people are forgiven, especially when they don't deserve it, it makes a huge difference in their lives. And that causes them to think, why did they forgive me? And when you make known, I forgave you because 
Jesus Christ for Spirit gave me, that opens up doors. That opens up not only doors for evangelism, but for you to grow spiritually in your own walk with Christ. I mean, forgiveness is that one thing that really helps you overcome some of the things that are holding you back, such as anger and bitterness, and things that the Bible says does not promote the righteous life that God desires. But instead, it says, you know what? You're now free from anger. You're free from hate. You're free from the world. And now you're free in peace and forgiveness and grace just to love God and to be like God, to celebrate God because of what he's done for you. I'd be having a party if the king forgave that kind of day. That's more of how he should have been. I think about all the different things that God has called us to do. And I think about how there's always wisdom in what God has done. And when God tells us to forgive, the offender does benefit. But as our prayer says, we should pray for them to have mercy from God, not justice. We pray for them to have heaven, not hell. And not, so we see it has benefits for the offender, but for us, it frees us because it allows us to have a relationship with God, freer. And until you can give up some of the anger in your life, until you can give up some of the bitterness in your life, until you can give up some of those anger things that you're resenting other people and holding other people accountable for, demanding of them, you're not going to grow spiritually. This is why I had this in part of this, this discipleship sermon. Because you cannot truly follow Christ if you're still following your anger against other people. You see, one of the things that we have to understand is we have to forgive. I'm not going to deny that people hurt you. People have hurt you. They're going to continue on hurting you. People are going to do things that are not fair to you. People are going to say things that will break your heart. People are going to try to characterize your behavior and your character a certain way. But when we allow Christ to modify our behavior and our thinking, we pray for them. So some people were asking last week, you, you know what, the Sunday before, we heard all these faith stories about people coming to Christ and changing by Christ. And last week you talked about changing for Christ. Now how can we truly change? Well, one of the answers to truly changing so that you can give God control and just elevate your spiritual life with God is willing to forgive. So put the past behind you. Put the hurts of your life behind you. Put behind all the things people have done against you behind you and focus on what God has done for you. And that, and that changes everything. So how do we forgive? First of all, you need to realize that, that, you're, that you're angry and hurting inside. Admit it. Admit it. A lot of people say, well, I'm not hurt, I'm not angry. Yes, you are. Just admit it. But then after doing that, say... Because Christ has forgiven me, appreciate grace. Because appreciating grace is the means and the motivation that helps you to forgive other people. And then what you need to do is also pray for them. I mean, the Bible says to pray and bless those who have hurt you, your enemies even. And so if I read that passage, one of the things I learn is it's hard to hate people you pray for on a continual basis, isn't it? The more you pray for someone, the more you tend to empathize and com have compassion and you consider, rather than judging them, try it. Start praying for those who have hurt you. And then allow God to take control. <clears throat> Instead of following your anger and bitterness, start allowing the things that God has done in your life that has spurred joy, that has spurred thankfulness, that has spurred meaning to really impact your life. Because if you don't, you won't grow spiritually. One of the things that we saw from the king, what did, how did the king respond? He responded by saying, you wicked servant, and he flung him out. I think that is one of the scariest scenes for me. Because why? It's not just hell. It's not just separation from God. But the Bible says that I was designed for a purpose, and that purpose was to do good works. My purpose was to glorify God. And if I am not able to glorify God, if I'm not able to do good works, if I'm not able to worship and serve God, then I really have no purpose or meaning in life. Your purpose and meaning in life is really connected with you serving Christ. That's why I'm pushing discipleship so hard. But the fact is, if you're unwilling to forgive your brother, if you're not willing to forgive other people, God will cut it off so that you can't serve him. And that means an empty life. I, don't, I can't imagine a worse life than that. A life cut off from God. A life cut off from my purpose of worshiping and serving. And